Hi, welcome to STEM with the Houston Public Library. I'm Lauren, and today we are making a spaghetti bridge. This activity is intended for tweens and teens. You will need the following supplies for this activity. Spaghetti noodles, hot glue gun and glue, graph paper, which can be printed from print-graph-paper.com, a ruler or straight edge, cardboard for your bridge's roadway, and optional supplies, rubber bands, scissors, marker, and something to test the load that your completed bridge can hold, such as metal washers, coins, or many other things. To start out with, you might want to research different bridge designs. In particular, I found the truss bridge designs useful. I chose to use the Warren Bridge and the Warren with verticals, such as in this one, the Warren Bridge, and in this one, the Warren with verticals. Once you've decided on your design, draft it on your graph paper. Simply draw the design life size so that you can measure your spaghetti against the design. Now you are ready to begin measuring and cutting your spaghetti. Simply place your spaghetti on your design and use your marker to show where to cut the spaghetti. You can use your scissors or simply with your hands, break the spaghetti. With the smaller pieces of spaghetti, you can use one of the pieces, since they are all the same size, um, use one of the pieces to measure the next spaghetti piece. Simply line them up at the end and break them at the same location on each one. Once you've gotten all of your pieces measured out to the correct size, place it on the diagram just like I have here. Then use your glue gun to carefully glue each portion where the spaghetti meets another spaghetti strand together. If it lifts up, that's okay. Just simply put a little more glue down until it allows you to lift up this glue gun without breaking the bridge. Wait for your glue to dry before handling. It is very hot and I don't want you to burn yourself. Once the glue has dried, carefully lift your bridge strand oh, from the page. If a piece falls out, simply re-glue it. You may need to break off some of the large pieces of glue so that you can put new glue on the bridge.
Now you've got one side of your bridge. Simply do the same process to get the other side. Now you are ready to glue your bridge together. Simply measure enough pieces of spaghetti to cover every joint on your truss. In my case, 11. You may need a friend to help you with this part. You can also use something like a water bottle or glass to help hold your truss up. Put glue on one end of your middle pieces and then glue it to the joint. If it falls over, that's okay. Just pick it back up. Wait for your glue to dry. You may notice that most of the designs have triangles. This allows the bridge to be stronger. This one is going to be somewhat strong, but to make it even stronger, you can bundle multiple pieces of spaghetti together into rods to make your bridge just like I have here. To do this simply gather however many pieces of spaghetti you want. In my case I use 10 pieces of spaghetti. Hold them together in your hand and then carefully wrap a rubber band around the bundle. If it is a long strand like this one, you'll want to wrap rubber bands around each end. Once you've got the rubber bands on the spaghetti strands, take your hot glue gun and glue a line or a ring around the spaghetti. Just like with your rubber bands, you'll want to do this in multiple places around the spaghetti. With this method, I recommend measuring all of your spaghetti pieces before you glue them into the rod. The rod is very hard to cut into smaller pieces as when it's held together. Then just like we did with our little bridge, you will glue together your truss your, and then make the box. If you'd like to, you can even put some supporting pieces on the top or the bottom.